Hey guys, this is Derek at Tech Connection, and uh, I thought today I'd do a little overview of the Supermicro 5015A uh, EHF bare bones server. Uh, we picked this up not too long ago in order to do a FTP server, and there were a couple of really nice things about this, so I thought other people uh, might enjoy seeing a video. I searched online for some you know, hands-on versions of what people have experienced, and I didn't find anything, so I just uh, I took the plunge and I bought it for myself. So here's the server. I thought it might be worthwhile to give you guys a sense of how big this is. Here is an old school Linksys router. So this is a very, very tiny system. It fits nicely in a shelf or a rack if you've got one of those. It does have the, the bunny ears for a 19 inch rack if you happen to have. And then just for depth, Here's a uh, here's like a standard Linksys switch. I don't have the ears for this switch, but this is a rack mountable switch. And so you get an idea. It's about obviously 19 inches across, and I'd say maybe you know 10 inches, 11 inches deep, give or take. It's a really tiny computer, which makes it handy for certain applications. So if you're going to do say FTP or you're going to do a firewall or something like that with Linux, this is a really good one. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the case. So here's the inside. Inside you're looking at you got two Molex connectors and two SATA power connectors. The other Molex and the other SATA are tucked away in here. You can snip the zip tie and extend it if you want. So you do have room for two drives. There are four SATA ports and one legacy port still here. So you can still get away with IDE if you just want to reuse those. The computer being an atom based uh, unit isn't going to run like at hyperspeed or anything anyway. So if you've got an old uh, CD-ROM you need to use to install or you just want to use an old hard drive, you can certainly do that right there. So you maybe could cram three drives into this if you put a Y adapter on one of the powers. Uh, but that would be probably the most you could get away with. Things I like about this system, uh, there is one fan included. If it were me, I might put another one. But a lot of these Atom units don't have any fan at all. So at least they've given you something. And if you want to do additional fans, there's one, two, where is the third one? Third one is over here. Third one. So you put three additional fans without doing any splitting or anything like that. I find that, you know, if it was me, I might pick up a small one like that, a 40, put it here, maybe put another one here, just to guarantee some stability. It does get really warm when you leave it running. Uh, also nice, she takes DDR2 desktop RAM. This is DDR2 800. <coughs> So the RAM is cheaper. Power supply is a 200 watt. Nothing uh, too powerful, but more than enough for an Atom unit. And okay, what else we got? One PCI slot, a couple PCI Express X4s. X4s, if you're not familiar with uh, utilizing this, is pretty common for like say uh, a NIC. So if you get like a double double ported gigabit NIC or something, they're usually X4. So it's good that that's not an X1 right there. So those are good. There is no X1. There is no X16. And the PCI slot is horizontal. So you're going to need a riser card if you actually intend to use this. It won't be the easiest part to find. It didn't come in the box. Super Micro, though, they sell it separately. If you uh, punch in the model of what you've purchased, they'll tell you which riser card is appropriate. I don't recall what it is off the top of my head. I didn't use it in this case. Flip this little guy around. Standard legacy port, got a COM port, two USBs, VGA. These are the dual gigabit ports. So this is great for Linux type applications. And then you could knock out this uh, PCI cover and you could put in another dual car, a dual NIC card or a quad or something like that and, and then you have yourself a pretty hefty uh, router that you could you could load DDWRT or something like that onto this and you'd have a very very capable system. 
For the hard drive, you're going to mount it here. So you got these screw holes here. With the hard drive itself, you're actually going to screw in directly from the bottom through the case. So the hard drive will basically be laying right on this. They've included a plastic sleeve to prevent it from shorting out on the, against the metal. But other than that, the hard drive is just resting right on the case bottom. So if there's any vibration issues, the hard drive will definitely be sensitive to that if this is in a like a shaky environment or if somebody bumps the bumps this uh this unit. So it's definitely meant to be securely mounted in a rack when it's in use. All right. This unit does have one internal USB slot. It uses the external style connector. So what I've seen some folks do is they'll do a USB to compact flash adapter or something like that. Or they'll just get an L and L brang, uh, bracketed uh, thumb drive and they'll boot up right off that. No hard drive at all. So that's another way you could go. Internal headers, there's a USB here and there's another USB there. So you could do a number of devices with this system. Okay. Put the cover back on. So for this particular guy, he was used as a uh, FTP server. We just put a 500 gig drive in there. Uh, in order to load the operating system, you'll notice probably there was no, no CD-ROM slot, which is really typical of uh, little mini servers this size. There's just no CD-ROM support. So what you would do, in my case, I used a USB uh, CD-ROM, an external CD-ROM. You could also just take the cover off and attach to your SATA port briefly and then when you're done loading the operating system just remove the CD-ROM and then reattach your cover. It's, you know, it's inconvenient but if you buy an external drive, an external CD-ROM drive these days, they're roughly $19. So it might be a worthwhile investment if you're going to do a lot of messing around with a system like this. Okay. Let me uh, pause here and then I'll move it to the rack so you can get an idea of about how big this is. Okay, so welcome to my little telecom room at this office. And here is a regular size server. I thought it might be fun to put these side by side so you could get a view of it. So the, the Super Micro and the Dell, big difference. Definitely a big difference. The Dell is going to use up an entire cabinet. This little guy, this is perfect for those people that just need a little, you know, some con some condensed or uh, a denser data center. So here's a simple little rack that I put together. Uh, don't make fun of my wiring. Okay, so if we were going to install this, one-handed no less, it would go like so. And that's how it would look once it's installed. It's a very, very efficiently sized item. And with uh, dual processors, it's actually quite fast. So once you hook it up to something with some uh, throughput capabilities, and your internet is maybe a 10 by 10 or something like that, you're going to get a really good, uh, really good performance out of this. I've been very happy with how quickly this item runs. Okay, I hope that's been useful. If you were on the fence about buying it, uh, I would suggest go for it. It's actually really nice, and it sure beats uh, buying one of these and using that as an FTP server. If you've got any questions, uh, just drop me, a, drop me a comment or uh, hit me up on Facebook. Thanks, guys. Bye.